Hey, you know what would be pretty cool? Having a tiny helicopter on Mars that can buzz around and scan the environment from above. Taking pictures and looking for hidden extraterrestrial life on its own. At some point, somebody at NASA said something like this behind closed doors. Then they went and actually did it. Say hello to Ginny, one of the most significant scientific achievements since we first started exploring space. Back in 2020, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL, packed a tiny side project onto the Mars mission. It was called Ingenuity, a flying experiment meant to test if powered flight was even possible on another planet. Just proof of concept, a test demo. The real mission was to explore the surface of Mars with the rover called Perseverance. In 2021, this six-wheeled robotic scientist about the size of a small SUV landed on Mars in a place called Jezero Crater. Scientists believe there was once a lake here about 3.5 billion years ago. That's important because where there's ancient water, there might have been ancient extraterrestrial life. Perseverance is basically a science lab on wheels. It can study rocks, drill into the surface, and stash samples in little sealed tubes for later. These samples are part of a long-term plan. NASA and ESA plan to bring them back to Earth in 2033 for more study. This could finally answer, has life ever existed outside Earth? Maybe samples won't give the definitive answer, but it's our best shot. Ugh, suddenly 2033 seems very far away. The rover has other instruments and testing tools that could greatly benefit future exploration of Mars. But the hero of this story is Ginny. They got the idea for this little chopper from drones here on Earth and thought it could fly around and scout for perseverance. However, actually making it work on Mars sounds almost impossible. The first problem was the atmosphere. Mars has approximately only 1% of Earth's air pressure which means there's barely anything to push against. On Earth, chopper blades bite into thick air to generate lift. Since there's basically no air on Mars, it's sort of like trying to swim in fog instead of water. Then there's gravity. Sure, it's only about 38% of Earth's, which helps a bit, but not nearly enough to offset the lack of air. To fly at all, the device would have to be feather light, with huge blades spinning like crazy just to grab onto the thin air. Oh, and there's also the cold. At night, temperatures plunge to negative 130 degrees Fahrenheit, which is approximately the same as the coldest night ever recorded in Antarctica. That's enough to damage most electronics, and batteries hate the cold. So Ginny charged up during the day with a tiny solar panel, then used that power to keep warm through the freezing Martian night. Every day, scientists had to hope that their drone worth $80 million wouldn't land under a hill in a shadow, especially since it couldn't be controlled manually. Mars is so far away that signals can take up to 20 minutes to get there. Imagine playing a video game where your character has that kind of delay after you press a button. Ginny had to be fully autonomous. All these technological technicalities and yet Ginny did not simply fly. What was first planned as a 30-day test trial with five flights ended up being a full-fledged support mission that lasted three years. So, how did engineers pull it off? First, they had to make Ginny as light as physically possible, only four pounds. That's lighter than my house cat, but somehow it still carried two cameras, a battery, a flight computer, a radio antenna, and even a heater. Everything had to be trimmed down or miniaturized. Then came the blades, Ginny's most important feature. On Earth, a small helicopter spins its blades between 400 and 500 RPM. But we explained why that wouldn't work on Mars. So Ginny's two rotor blades had to spin five times faster, about 2,500 revolutions per minute. Each blade was about two feet long, made from carbon fiber, light as a feather, but tough as nails. And instead of sitting side by side like on a drone, those blades were stacked on top of each other, spinning in opposite directions. That cancels out the twisting force you'd normally get from a single spinning blade. 
You know how helicopters have that tiny tail rotor in the back? They need that because when their main rotor on top spins to lift the chopper up, it also creates a twisting force called torque. That makes the entire vehicle want to spin in the opposite direction. Without some way to fight that, you'd end up doing donuts in the sky. However, Ginny couldn't have a tail rotor because it would add too much weight, take more power, and make things even more complicated. So, engineers created a workaround with two large blades stacked on top of each other, spinning in opposite directions, which prevented the drone from spinning out of control. As for controlling it, Ginny didn't have a full-blown AI, but it wasn't remote-controlled either. NASA uploaded flight plans from Earth, but once the drone took off, it flew itself using onboard sensors and code. Basically, like a really smart autopilot. To stay on course, it watched the ground with a downward-facing camera, kind of like tracking its own shadow as a guide. And finally, the result was seen in April 2021, when Ginny lifted off the Martian ground and hovered in place for just 39 seconds. It rose about 10 feet into the air, hovered a bit, spun around a little, and landed safely back on the red dirt. It was short and simple. One small step for a drone, but a huge one for humanity. For the next three years, the team responsible was testing the limits, flying Ginny further and further. From above, Ginny saw more than the rover could. The drone helped map the terrain, spotted risks like loose sand and sharp rocks, and even found shortcuts for perseverance. It even saved the rover, so to speak, when its photos helped the team reroute the vehicle around a tricky dune. Ginny also made snapshots of interesting layered rocks, exactly the kind you'd need when you're searching for ancient life. Basically, once the drone spotted something weird or promising from above, Perseverance would roll over to check it out. And it worked way better than anyone expected. However, in January 2024, Ginny went missing. The drone was supposed to do a short hop, go up, hover, land, easy stuff. But after takeoff, NASA lost contact. For a while, no one knew what had happened, just silence. A few days later, NASA finally got a weak signal and pulled the flight data. Turns out, Ginny flew over a featureless terrain. See, it used its downward-facing camera to track movement, kind of like an optical mouse. No texture below meant nothing to lock onto. Mid-flight, the drone got disoriented, tilted, and during landing, one of its blades clipped the ground. NASA confirmed it. The rotor was damaged. It will never fly again. However, this is not a sad story. Even with broken wings, the robot is still useful. After Flight 72, NASA gave Ginny new software and a new job, staying powered on and quietly collecting daily data possibly for the next 20 years. In a way, Ginny has gone from scout to ground-based observer. So, what happens next? Well, we wait for 2030 while we make more flying robots. The biggest one on the horizon is Dragonfly, a car-sized rotorcraft scheduled to launch in 2028 and land on Titan, one of Saturn's moons. Titan has a thick atmosphere and low gravity, a dream environment for a flying drone. Dragonfly will hop from one location to another, searching for life in that icy landscape. It's like Ginny's big cousin, but with nuclear power and a whole moon to explore. The project Ingenuity's success is already inspiring NASA to design better Martian helicopters. Some of them could be equipped with grippers to pick up rock samples, or even join up with rovers for full-on search and collect operations. Thanks to Ginny, what started as a tech demo could one day evolve into a fleet of flying robots crisscrossing the red planet. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.